She, she, me, you, too. It's your boy Season, and I'm back with another reaction video. In today's reaction video, we're looking at Dante, Devante, the one. Um, she wanted me to pull it out, animate the story. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, and please do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Please, y'all hit that subscribe button. Y'all be killing that subscribe button lately. Please keep hitting that subscribe button like y'all been doing. Come on, man. We almost, well, not almost, but we on the road. I always say, but before we start this video, let me. Like, y'all, y'all hit, yeah, keep, keep hitting it, keep hitting it now. Let's go to get straight to this video. Don't bring nobody over my house. I brought you into this world. I can take you out. Capiche? Yes, ma'am. Every black mama. Every black mama. My parents always made it known that I was a good kid and I agree with them to a certain extent because even though I was a good kid behind closed doors I did things that they didn't condone so as I got older especially the more they watched my videos the more they started to see that I was not just a good kid but a good kid with bad intentions <laughs> let me show you why so I remember back when I was 18 and there was this period of time that my little sister did gymnastics and during her time in gymnastics, she had competitions that she would go to and they'd happen on a specific date of the month and would last for about a day. So why is this important to the story? Well, every competition is located in a city far away, which means my parents would be gone for about two to three days max, leaving their oh, house no. in the hands of their trusted sons me and my brother see that's where they messed up because they didn't know us well enough to know that we was going to do something stupid back whenever i got the chance to do stupid stuff i rarely did them but whenever i did i didn't go to the fullest extent of my stupidity why because i was paranoid i always knew in the back of my mind that what i was doing was going to come with some consequences so while in the act of my stupidity i would think two steps ahead of everybody while having fun at the same time of course. <laughs> i only made those risky decisions because i knew that they were the perfect opportunities and i didn't want to let them go to waste and my whole thought process back then was certain opportunities were like windows you gotta jump through them before they close but in my case this wasn't just an opportunity it was just pure disobedience my brother, though, was the exact opposite because whenever the occasion, he'd go all gas, no brakes. That so as soon as my sister told us that she had a competition, we turned into Shisui and Itachi, playing ahead, <laughs> and didn't tell us. So fast forward to the day of and right before my parents were about to leave, they were like, don't bring nobody over my house. I brought you into this world. I can take you out. Capiche? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Hello? Nigga, pull up. We gonna have all the hoes, the alcohols, and all the magic pixie sticks a nigga can ask for. Really? You for real? Less talking, more driving. Nah, like for real. Like, I'm looking at some confirmation here. Like, are we bringing these things? <laughs> nah, bro. I'm, I'm playing. <laughs> Pull up though. So all my homies pull up later that night and I made it known to everybody that this ain't gonna be no house party. It's just gonna be us. Cause one, I didn't want nobody to break nothing. I had to break my foot off in their anus. <laughs> two, I had a racist neighbor two houses down that would not hesitate to file a complaint or call the 5 -0. And you got me freaked up if you think I'm gonna pull a NWA. It's just gonna be a little bro night. We gonna blast some loud music, play some video games, and eat ungodly amounts of food with some money we most likely don't have. And we just gonna have some fun. So basically a thought experience. <laughs> that's the thing. After really digest the fact that this was the perfect opportunity to bring women. Bro, I had to listen to niggas talking about some nah, where the hoes? Ah, ah, where my meat went? Ah, ah, where the weed? <laughs> but I members at the time and myself hanging out, we knew how to just have fun for a long time without having to add in moment enhancers. You know, like women or drugs or alcohol. You know, nothing crazy. Just a vibe. But when that period of time expired, the situation always turned into a edged sword whenever we would add in moment enhancers. Let's one we struggled with the most 
being when we brought women. Why? Because a lot of people in our group would change the way they acted when women were around just to impress them, including myself at the time. Do anymore, which that is stupid. And this ultimately helped us or hurt us both in a negative way because that's what you call being fake. Fellas, right be yourself. There. It's way more attractive to women when you're being yourself than being someone you're not to impress them. And if they don't like you for you, then move on. <clears throat> From the streets did she emerge and the streets she shall return. Now I got to throw into the oxygen that me and my brother were feared by almost everybody in the group. And we were even told that to our faces because unlike everybody else that changed the way they acted, he and I mastered the art of the f -Lord. Which got a lot of females despite not being the most attractive in a lot of people's eyes. Mostly because I didn't want a relationship back then. Yes, I was for the streets. Not today, but I was back then. From the streets, I emerged. <laughs> I shall not return. Yes, I have standards now. But you feel me like, hey, don't let that female track record fool you, though. I will sit down and whoop your assets at Smash Bros, sing my anime song to the tip top of my lungs, play my PC and console games until you can see my bones through my fingers, and will still have masculinity and confidence to get women. So that's what we did. A couple of us each called up a girl of our choice because we made the executive decision to have other intentions that night. If you know, you know. And sadly, the only girl that came was the girl I told the to slide. But not in the way that I thought she would pull up because I brought a friend. And this was not just any friend that pulled up with her. This was a friend that none of us liked. Why? Because we had our reasons. Number one, based off of what I've heard and seen with my own eyes, in my opinion, this girl has got to be one of the most ignorant people I have ever seen in my life, even to this day. Yeah, I've seen her in the election day line waiting, but I ain't say nothing because I don't frick with her like that. And my brother <laughs> told me that he ran into her at a job a couple weeks ago, and the words that just came out her mouth was just utter stupidity. I honestly think she had a couple missing wires, maybe some screws loose in her head, I, I don't know. Like, have you ever been around that one person that every time they speak, the words that come out their mouth just makes no sense. Like yes, their presence I have. just gives yes, you a I headache. Have. Bruh, if she was close to the edge and trying not to lose Push her, her head, I'm pushing her and I'm acting <laughs> like I'm blind the next second. Grandmaster Flash energy. Number two, she was crazy and annoying. When you pissed her off, she would make the biggest of scenes. I like, I know I'm extra, but this girl was extra, extra. She was the type of person to constantly get you into bad situations. And I ain't want no part of that. Especially not in my parents' house. Because if she would have broke something or made a huge scene disturbing the neighbors, causing me to get in trouble more than I already was, then... Hey, yo, Chris. Alright, I'm going to call the girl I told this slide the brain and her psychotic friend pinky they both walk in and without hesitation they wanted excitement which we provided for a good minute but that didn't last long because like i said i didn't want to go to the fullest extent of my stupidity by making this gathering a party and potentially cause severe chaos even though i had other intentions for them coming over that night they wasn't really rocking with that nor should i have cared but seeing as I'm already in the moment of my stupidity, there wasn't no turning back at that point, and we had to make do with what we had and who we had there. Me and my brother had to find some ways to keep the fun alive, and after some time, everybody else went upstairs, leaving me, my brother, and those two downstairs. And I think they noticed it, because it got to a point where Pinky decided to test me and my brother's gangster, telling us we won't do this, we too pussy to do that. You know, the hype and peer pressure to potentially get to do something that she felt would be the highlight of the night. And I gotta admit it, me and my brother were taking the bait like dummies. So Pinky jumps to the point and was like, I won't do, I bet y'all won't whip y'all meat out right now. I mean, that was our intentions for them anyway, just, you know, in private. That caught me all the way off guard because I wasn't expecting that. Like, I'm bold, but I ain't 
that bold. I'm a wholesome man. I was thinking like, what is this? A hibachi restaurant? Like, can I take one of y'all and do this in private maybe? There are other dudes here. That's sus. Like, what's in it for me? What do I get out of this? Are you going to go to the store and, and buy some knee pads real quick? Like, my meat is sacred. You can't just order this off the menu and expect it on your plate in front of everybody. She's going to have to order this meat off of Amazon Prime in a box <laughs> and expect it on her porch the next day. So, I hesitated. But my brother did the exact opposite. Because before I made up my decision, he whipped it out in front of everybody at the speed of life. <laughs> Bruh, I turned my head so fast in the opposite direction, you thought I would have had a crick in my neck. And I'm looking out the side of my eye at the girls, and they were both staring at him like he's a championship trophy. Like, I'm surprised their mouths wasn't watering the way they was looking at him. And I think they forgot I existed, so I, I ain't really have to do that. I was completely fine with. I even saw Eric walk down the stairs, and he was like, I am disgusting. And instantly turned back while I'm over here about to puke out my ears. For me, it was definitely the most horrifying highlight of the night, but can't say that as much for the girls, though. Did anything happen with the girls and us that night? No. Did I care enough to try after? No. Coochie was not that important. So after some time, they left, and we all awkwardly finished the night playing some Ninja Storm 4. I must say, though, this double-edged sword didn't really help us get anything, and it definitely hurt my eyes, but hey, at least he did the job for me. That man was bold. <laughs> had I had a couple more seconds, I probably